So, yeah, it's not very good, you know, in that regard. Um, so, with us, where we stand now in terms of marriage, um, I mean, yes, we still live together. Yeah, I'm engaged. I got the ring and everything. I do got people ask me now on both sides about, you know, game, when am I getting married and everything. Um, and, you know, for us, we're still working it out and figuring out, you know, we want to get married, but we want to make sure it's, it's right for both of us, you know, because you see the thing for me too, that has helped is, is age, you know, the age has helped me because when I turned 25, the way I saw things started to, to shift and I started to see things in a new way when I turned 25 and I don't know what it is, but you know, that's why I would recommend for people, you know, to, to wait on getting married until, you know, your mind makes that shift, you know, because for me, it was at 25 and then um, carried over until I was 20, you know, into 26 and stuff, you know. And so, you know, right now, I would say that, you know, that now the way I see, I understand why he sees marriage the way he does. Um, I see examples on a day-to-day -day basis about, you know, girls getting married because, you know, they have, you know, they're pregnant and they want to make it right. I see examples of that. I see uh, examples of people, you know, people feeling they have to get married because of religion. I mean, I see all these examples, all the things that, you know, that he learned about and stuff and how hard it is for men you know, in terms of relationships and stuff, I, I now understand that a lot more um, than I did, you know, and it was all about when I was ready to see the perspective, and that kind of started when I was 25, uh, when I started, and now I'm kind of at the point where I understand, you know, and I, I, I get it, you know, I actually get it, and I'm, I'm glad that we didn't just jump into getting married, you know, when, you know, we were, you know, when I was like 21, he was like 22, you know, I'm glad we didn't do that because, yeah, we would have divorced because we wouldn't have known. We don't, now we're not experts on marriage, but, you know, we want to make sure that it's right for both of us, you know, isn't that something you think? Yeah. Um, of course. I think for, um, I think for, um, I was just looking at him. So, um, so I think for like when we're getting married, I mean, I get people who ask me, like I said, this past uh, Saturday at my aunt's, you know, funeral, I got asked when I was going to get married. Um, and my response is like, you know, we we're trying to figure out when we want to do it. Um, one thing is that we are going to get a prenup, you know, before we, you know, um, decide to go and walk down the aisle. That's very important. Now, a lot of people will probably be kind of, you know, surprised. Why would you do that? Why don't you just do it God's way and stuff like that? There's people who even believe in dating God's way and stuff like that, which I don't even know if that's possible to do that. Because in the Bible, there is no dating God's way is just you get married and then, you know, then you can kiss and touch and hug and embrace and stuff like that. Or you're... you rape a woman and you marry her. That's what? That's in the Bible. God, God, God's got all type of messed up ways to get married. But, um, yeah, there's there's a lot in the Bible that people don't know. But we, we've read it because, you know, it, it comes up for us to know so we understand you know, because there, there's a lot of people who just don't know what they're following when it comes to being Christians. They have no I, idea. I would never do that stuff. I don't follow that book. Yeah, it's, there's, you know, there, it's just, I recommend you read it. When I say read it, open the book up and start in Genesis and then, um, and then go all the way through the book till you get to... Mm. Revelation? Yeah, about Revelation. 
then I think at that point, then, you know, you'll be, you'll be at the right place, you know. You'll understand. If you go throughout it and you start to listen to the language that's within it, then you'll know. So, yeah, it's it's a lot in there. A lot of people are just going to think, oh, it's just what my church says. No, it's not what your church says. Unfortunately, it's not. Um, it's, not it's nothing like that. Uh, basically, the Bible is trying to put frosting on old food, so to speak. It's nothing like what you think it is. And that Bible, they condone slavery. You know, and that's not the only thing they condone. The killing of people and just all kinds of other stuff. The rape of women, it's a lot. So, but you'll know if you open the book up and read it, you know. Um, but reason, you know, when are we getting married? We're getting married when we're ready to get married. When we both decide that we're ready to get married, you know. And, you know, who knows? It could be next year, the year after. You know, it could be this year. We don't know when it is, you know. We tell people when it is, but we both just have to be on the same page. Uh, for anyone, he feels that, you know, certain things have to be met first before we get married. You know, and he has to feel, um, what, what do you have to feel there? Okay. This is why I am getting a prenup. And this is why I am not getting married yet. Okay. As you have already seen, when I show love to her, um, cute things, I bring out love. It is received in a way, not always, but a lot of times. It is received in the way that you saw, where it turns into an argument somehow. Now, back when I was a Christian, I used to get caught up in it. So what you saw would have blew up. What I do now is what you see. I walk away. I back off. Um, I stand ground, and I don't get weak. I don't cry anymore. I don't, I don't do that. Um, what I will do is I will let her sit there. Uh, and she will calm down and think about things. And then she asked where I was. Then, you know, I sat there. I stared at the bear like, dang, you know, I was trying to show her some love. I had to reflect my own thoughts. You know, like a computer. Like, what do you do better next time? But since that's where I fell at, I've actually asked all that. We did this thing called Prologue. where We went through all that. Um, it's on the internet. Get you and your partner get together, sit right next to each other, do that thing called prologue. It's for uh, people who want to get married. Got very important questions in there. Do it together. It sends it to your email so you both have it to keep. Don't delete that. Make a new folder in your email and save it as prologue. So things I don't think like that. I not have that anymore though. Oh, I got it. I don't think I have it anymore. See what I'm saying? Make well, a new I don't know. If, I don't know if I have it prologue. because. I don't know because it's been years and I don't know if, if the link expired. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, but I have a folder dedicated to just that. Okay. Well, so, you know, okay. in, my, in, the, in the relationship, um, I do my absolute best to make sure that she's comfortable. You know, she goes to work. I'm home busting ass here. I'm vacuuming. The, the floors are getting vacuumed. The dishes are getting washed. The bathroom is going to get clean. The bedroom is going to get vacuumed. Bed's going to get made. The windows, you know, not windows, but the mirrors is going to be, get clean. You know, all that. And I get up. She got to go to work. She got to be at work eight, eight something. I get up at seven thirty before she gets up. Immediately, I make her breakfast. I get her lunch ready. Immediately, and I don't think I failed yet doing that. All right. And while I'm at it, I bust the dishes and I go on ahead and prepare food right then and there at about eight o'clock so that when she gets back home, she don't got to worry about is food going to be ready. I start making that motherfucker about 20 minutes before she gets home. That's how I show my love. 
I show it that way. I show it through touch and compassion all the time. But it is received not always great. Like, I was telling her you're beautiful. And I'll go to kiss her or rub her arm or something. And she'll pop off on me. Because I can't, because no, I have no business marrying her until I figure out how to cheer her up correctly. How to make her feel comfortable correctly. How to, when she's sad, you know, how to make her feel better. You know, different little problems she has with a car, little things like that. I don't know much about cars. I want to be able to do those things. Until I can do those things, I'm not fit to be a husband. So that's just the way that it is. Nobody should be married, in my opinion. I have no business marrying her unless I can actually cheer up my own woman. And since I can't do that, and since I have lost all of my chances and all of my different abilities of stuff, she said, I said, Michelle, what do you like? I like romance. I like flowers every now and then. Boom, I do that. I like to have food as a surprise. Well, it's, Boom, I do that, but it didn't work. Okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll, but I'll say this. So it's, until I get that shit right. But the thing is, it has been tough, though, doing that, because since we do live in an apartment, I mean, we do have bills. You okay. know, and with me not having a job, it is something we with me in the past, I have a job. I got a job now, but, you know, with the up and down of the jobs I've had and stuff, it's it's tough to do that, especially when you don't have the money, you know what I'm saying, constantly flowing in, you know, and being a black couple, that that's one of the things that can happen because, you know, unlike a white couple, you know, um, that can, you know, white girl, white guy or something like that, for them that can keep a job and all that stuff, you know, it can be tough for a black couple because, you know, this system is not made for us. You know what I'm saying? It's not something that that nurtures us or that allows us to get jobs easy like that. You know what I'm saying? Some people might disagree, but it's just a fact. You know, I've gone to job fairs. I've seen lines of black people there trying to get jobs. I've been one of the people trying to get jobs. I've made resumes out the ass, you know, and I do pretty damn good resumes. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've applied to, you know, in the past, I've applied to over 100 applications, you know, assessments and all, going to interviews and all, see, you know, and I didn't get a job. And I was perfectly qualified. I was the person on the perfect tee to what they were looking for. But I never got picked for the job. And I feel like I should have. But, you know, the people just wanted the same people that left the job who didn't do any work. They just wanted those people, you know, to half ass shit, you know. But, you know, some other people might disagree with me and say, well, oh, why don't you just go out of town? Why don't you go to the military? Why don't you do that? That's not what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm justified in doing the hell what I want to and trying it the way that I want to try it. And I'm doing it the way people told me to do it, you know. And surely, because I went to college and... When I was years and spent all that time, I thought, okay, my degree is going to be worth something. It's going to be easy for me to get a job like this. So much so that I waited three months before I even applied for a job. You know what I'm saying? And only to find out the degree didn't help at all. You know, luckily I had experience that I gained through jobs and stuff like that on my, you know, on my own and stuff. But if it was just after my degree, yeah, I would be in worse shape. Now, now I do work. Um, so, you know... Taking care of money, that is important. And making sure you do have, you know, the resources and stuff. And I now understand the truth about, you know, managing the money so that you can achieve things. I now do understand that. Now that I have a job and I've been able to do it, um, I would have gotten that sooner. But I had this job, like, after I got out of college. And they told me I was going to be there a year. And I was only, they told me I was going to be there a year. But I was only there for two months. So they basically lied to me about the job and fired some other people too. And that messed me up because I was just starting to climb up and do stuff. You know, only to go back to not making progress. And I think for me that was kind of a big thing that harmed, you know, me. 
you know, and my motivation because I was setting stuff up and I had plans for stuff and everything and only for it to go, not go anywhere. And I've been looking for jobs since. I tried my own business with my resumes and stuff, but people weren't really receptive of that type of stuff. You know, if you're black and you got other black people, they don't support you. They're more likely to support people who already got money more than people who are trying to start something up to help other people, you know. Um, so, you know, I mean, I realize you can't count on black folks to support you if you're a black business owner. You really cannot, you know. So, you know, you have to, you know, be have a business where you you are about helping multiple types of people, or they just black folks. You know, and so yeah. So, you know, I'm doing better now with the job and stuff, building stuff back up, planning things out different and stuff in a way that I think I will be able to and stuff. So I'm gonna be coming up my own business later on, uh soon anyway, uh, at some point this year. Um, but I do think that, you know, marriage wise, I'm not gonna say I'm the perfect wife, uh, or going to be the perfect wife. Um, I think that I do have things to learn, um, and to grow into, you know, um, and I'm, I'm just getting started with learning how to be a part of a team. Um, you know, I haven't really seen that, uh, so I'm having to figure that out, you know. Um, my way of showing love is that I feel like showing love is having money because that's what I was raised with is that money is the most important thing. Um, and if you got money, you know, flowing in, you can pay for everything. If you have that, then you're good. If you don't have that, things are bad, you know. So my way of showing love is, you know, how I've been raised with it is just going to work. You go to work, you work your ass off, you come home. You know, and, and that's showing love. And also, to me, showing love is buying things that you need around the house that's needed. You know, because that's what I'm working for. I'm working to, you know, keep the stuff paid. And also to afford supplies and things that we need and stuff like that. And thinking ahead on things about, you know, other things we're going to want to do. Like, are we going to want to go on vacation or do anything like that? You know, just things that looking ahead to me is... What it's about, you know, managing the bills is also something I do to show love, you know, to keep things going and stuff like that, you know. Um, no, I'm not the cleanest person. I'm going to go ahead and straight out of the game and admit it. But I'm starting to do things where, you know, when he's gone, you know, I'll try to clean up and help out with, you know, little things and stuff like that and try to do that. Um, I'm making an effort to do it. Um, am I going to say I'm perfect at it? No. But, you know, every day you make a little bit of an effort, you know, to do something and to try to go somewhere with things and stuff like that. That's that's what you do. Um, am I going to be ever be the same way he is about stuff? Maybe not. You know, maybe not perfect. But if, you know, I feel like if we're a team, because, like, I just started to understand the idea. And I think it's more so for me because I have a job. Because we both have jobs now then I could see myself as being a part of a team. You know, I couldn't see myself as being a part of a team when, like, he's working and I'm not. You know, it's, it's something to it when you're both working. You're both making money. To me, that makes your team. Because if the other person isn't working, it, to me, it's like it's like you can't be evenly matched with it. You you can't, to me. Um, so now I'm, I'm feeling that team aspect, and that's making me want to do things and to... Um, Pull my half more so. Not saying I haven't been trying to pull my half before, but, you know, I mean, every day I'm learning. And I'm, I'm getting there, you know. Um, am I going to know what makes him happy all the time? Um, I don't know. I, t I tend to know a lot about him, you know. He doesn't know a lot about me. Some stuff I don't really know about myself because, you know, you never really completely know yourself, but... For him, I know the stuff he likes, and you know, one way I show love to him is that uh, when he he did have the job that he really liked at, uh, at uh, when he worked on computers and stuff, was that I would show up and I would bring him lunch and stuff like that, you know, 
And that is something I would do on multiple occasions. When we had our anniversary and um, before he got that job and he was, you know, working at fast food, I gave him the money for our anniversary. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, well, you know, even if you don't have a job, we can still celebrate our anniversary. You know what I'm saying? So, like, the way I come out and show love is a bit different. It might be on more on the monetary side of getting things and experiences. Maybe it is. But it's, it's a bit different. Now, I will say, you know, Anwan's far more the type of guy that he's, he's far more comfortable with expressing how he feels, you know, in front of people. What I mean is, like, you know, he doesn't care what people think of him. You know, he's... He's the type, you know, he he doesn't mind helping people and, you know, doing things to, you know, doing stuff like being brave, you know, like, you know, uh, it might be doing something silly in front of people or something like that or whatever, you know, it's just like for Anwan, he's okay with being himself and fully in his skin, you know. Me, I'm not very much. I'm more like the type of, you know, like a clam. You know, I go back in the shell, you know, type of thing. You know, and people turn around and start looking. But now I've got kind of gotten a little bit better. But she's good at things, so. though. She's good at, like, like I've never seen a resume look as professional as she made mine look. And I was like, I was, she had me sitting there in a job interview, at a job trying to get a job interview. And I was sitting there waiting to get one. And I'm looking at my resume like, damn, like, ain't no way they're going to not pick me. But they didn't. No. But still, I was like, damn, I didn't know I had those skills. I never seen a resume look like that. I didn't know I, I didn't even know that I had that. You know, I never seen it on paper before. Uh -huh. You know, and like, so we'll throw some stuff together, like some soup. She'll, like, she'll make something out of, for me, I'm terrible. With, when it comes to like cooking stuff, I can make fish, I can make croquettes, you know, and I just now can make spaghetti. Yeah. So, I mean, cooking's hard for flavor like my macaroni sucks i don't know how i don't know why i, I make it the way they tell me to make it and it's bland as hell but it's just the way that they the way that it is i mean so when it comes to stuff for me to make for her it's simple you know it's not complicated but she makes a, a lasagna she'll make some complicated stuff she makes a bird the bird i've already showed y'all you said chicken the, not the chicken. bird like not like you go it's outside a, and get a bird but it's a whole bird it's okay. a chicken. It's a whole chicken. And it's good, you know. And sometimes he comes up with bird. these sandwiches and it's good. You know, and I'm like, how the heck did you make this stuff? Like, where's your recipe at? I'll be looking. She don't got no recipe book, no nothing. So how the heck do you make it taste that good? You know, <laughs> and it's so damn tender. I don't get it, but it is what it is. You know, so then sometimes she'll, you know, like like she said, when she has a job, she'll appear to me with food, and I'll feel loved that way. You know, those, those things do, you know, make me feel like she does care and she does love me. But since I'm so big on compassion and love and intimate touch and everything, you know, when it's not received, I feel all bad about it. You know, it's just, you know, but she has, you know, animals like her. And I like to do stuff, you know, like I, I was at the zoo and I try to get this penguin. I was like, if you think Michelle is pretty, jump in the water. Jump, jump. And he started to waddle and he jumped in the water. That's yeah. silly. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, the stuff he be doing like that. That was great. Too. Sometimes I get embarrassed and stuff because I don't. It jumped too. I was like, yeah. That's what I mean. Like, he, but, he do know. that kind of stuff. And it's just, to me, it's just like, I, I just, I, said, I don't See, know. I told you it's pretty. It's like, That's, see? I that's, told you, the penguin jumped in the water. Just a little embarrassing little stuff like that. But, that's you know, that's cheesy. Little stuff. You it's know. cheesy. I mean, in terms of the whole... You know, sometimes she tries to walk across the street. I just swoop her up right quick and run across the street like I'm saving her from something. Yeah. Some people don't seem to... Some people don't seem to get it, though. They A lot of people are just, like, stiff and not... I, I see, like, people are not really, like, so emotional. Man, I'm just trying to have that spontaneous combustion. You know what I mean? What? That spontaneous combustion. What does that mean? That means spontaneous combustion. What does that mean? That what, means to do know. things where she don't know what's happening, but something that's a little exciting for the moment. 
You know what I mean? I mean, like like I said, though, it's not always received. So a lot of times that is not it's not received, but you know, damn. But yeah, basically, that's basically why I'm, uh, I'm not married right now. But for me, my relationship is more important than a marriage. Yes, for her to have that experience, to have her marriage experience, you know, a lot of girls want that. I understand that, you know. But I just hold my relationship on such a higher standard, and I hold my my ability well, I think that to provide to, for her mental state when it's down or, to, or not, you know, on a, such a higher standard. To me, I just think. <laughs> to me, I think like when we'll get married, it'll it'll be at a time when when like I said, when we're ready, when oh. we're ready to get married, it'll be something that when we're. I mean, right. I, I mean, I try hard. I keep track of stuff. I actually keep track of when I do the dishes, when she do the dishes, because I be forgetting sometimes. Cause work, you be focused on work, and you come home, and then sometimes you be thinking that because you get so used to doing the dishes or you get so used to cleaning, you think it's you. So you know, sometimes you know, I be like, did you did you watch this? Like, yeah, no. But if I don't ever write this stuff down, I can't see from month to month. You know, the actions that she's really doing versus how much actions I'm doing. You know, because she'll be like, you know, oh, I do. Because when I, I, I'll start feeling like I'm doing too much. And then I'll start feeling like like a parent figure or something. And then it doesn't, you know, I'll be like, she'll be like, well, I do this. You know, I do these things where I'll handle stuff behind the scenes and whatnot. So I have to start writing this stuff and down. And I do. You're right. That's what she said with, with bills or, you know, talking to the people or whatever. Or, like, she'll get groceries while I'm at work. And when she does do these things, I mean, I just, I have to write it down. So because my brain be focused on me better in the relationship, better in the relationship, I'm trying to get her to love me more, to, you know, can I do that? Because I have already he went through, because really I've already went through asking her what she likes, yeah, and, it's, and it's, it all failed, a, so now I've got nothing else to bring it's out a, together. It's a day, it's a day to day thing. <coughs> it's something that day to day that we, we work on. Yeah. Do I, would I say that, because a lot of people, there are so many people who would say, well, why don't you guys just go, go downtown and go get, you know, go get married for 50 bucks and... Because she's not going to be happy with that. That is not a marriage experience. That is a, that is something, to somebody just pressuring you into something. Because what I've grown to know throughout this relationship, the seven years, is that she is the type to take a new avenue and grow apart. So I have to get a prenup for that. Like, it's just that I just know. It's just something I know within me based off of being with her for so long. You know, and it's just it's the way that it is. Because she, her, her mind is just, it works that way. It's, I would say this, it's not, as much, to me it's not as much a new avenue. It's like, one thing for me is that, yes, I do want to get married. I do feel like when I get married, I feel like, I feel that I would feel like, I'd have that, um, that understanding of what we're doing and where we're going. Okay, we're going to be together, you know, for the rest of our lives. That to me is what I want to define because, you know, being the girlfriend, you know, that's one thing. But, you know, I mean, for me, I want to define where we're going. We've been, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend for a while. Yeah, we're fiance, but, you know. I think, I don't know how you said fiancé and fiancé. Well, it's fiancé and fiancé, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. Um, so, to me, it's more like I just want to have a definition of where we're going and a definition of where we're going now because, like, my mind's going to say, okay, where we're going, where we're going, where we're going. And, you know, like, when I have wanted him to, you know, when I said – if you don't engage with somebody, well, well, I wanted to know where we were going. Because at that time, I was like, well, we've been going together for a while, a couple of years. And I was like, okay, where are we going from here? When I got engaged, I was like, okay, well, he wants to go towards marriage. Okay, well, I have some understanding, you know, of what's going on. For me, marriage would make me, um, I think it would just be something where, you know, yeah, I would like to be married. Yes, I would like to be a wife. Yeah, I want to be his wife. Um, and yeah, I would feel like when I'm the wife, yeah, then I would be in that role of, okay, you know, we're, we're this team going forward. That's what it is. See, I, I haven't seen but what that's that what actually it, looks like. So well, it, but as that's you can what, see, 
this is why I prepare myself with. That's what know, that's know. what I that's what I think, and that's what I have thought. Right, but see, um, I mean, since this is why we oh, can only talk so far with it. Yeah, we, we. I know. I don't know. People say you can't well, okay, switch. Here's, here's you what know? I'm not gonna shave my hair off at once. Well, not that. I said, you know, people say you get bait and switch where you know. Here's what. Here's what I'm. What I'm, is a, what I'm what I'm saying is a. What I'm saying as a wife is upon getting married. What my goal is upon getting married is that I really want to us to continue to work as a team. Um, I do want to learn how to do more things, you know, around the house and stuff. Um, like more stuff like I'm trying to think if I want to learn like cooking more stuff or whatever because um, I know how to cook stuff but I don't know how to cook stuff very much um, I want to work on us being financially stable together um, we're both gonna have separate businesses and stuff uh, that we're gonna be doing but you know strengthening each other um, and I think really it's just Going forward, and I, I'm trying to look forward to see, because it's like, I think it's just having that definition of we're husband and wife, okay? It's it's what, you know, because like when I met him, I knew he was it. So, you know, that's what I'm trying to get to is, okay, he's it, you know, I have the last name, okay, well, this is who I want to be, you know, since then, this is where I want to be, um, and, you know, does that mean it's going to change me tremendously? Yeah, there's going to be some things that will change. Um, I know he's going to be very serious about, you know, marriage, and I'm willing to work with him on it, you know, and to do things that, you know, to work out things like money, you know. Um, now, I do think he should have his money and have my money, but we'll come together to do stuff just like we do at work. I think we should do that, you know, to make things happen and stuff. But we should have our, we should both have our own money, you know. I do think that, you know, he should have the ability to have his experiences. I should be able to have my experiences of things that, you know, I want to do. But one of the most important things is I want us to be able to, going forward, to have fun. Um, you know, we haven't been able to have fun um, in our childhoods. We haven't been able to do that, and I just. For me, I look forward to a future with us having fun um, and getting a chance to have more first experiences. Because with Anwan, um, I've had a lot of first experiences with him other than losing my virginity. You know, there's been things that, you know, with him like... Going to the beach. Yeah, I have never, I had never gone to a beach. I had never seen a... a Camping. I never gone camping or try fishing uh, riding. before. I never tried the horseback riding or eating beer or doing stuff. You see what I'm saying? Like there's first things like that that I've never done, and there's things like I want to continue to have more first. Now does that mean I'm only gonna want to do the first? No, I'm gonna want to do other things. Like I want to travel with him, you know, and go places and explore places and learn new things and continue to research together and to you know, go walk on our spiritual path together. Now, um, see, when she says those things, it always pops in my head, like, are you sure that I'm it? Like, I always end up thinking that. Yeah, I, I feel that he's it. I mean, I don't feel like I'm a complete package myself. I got I got things to work on, too. I just be like, I don't want you to be disappointed because I'm not hiding anything now. I'm giving you well, all I'm not, of me I'm right not now. Like, I'm, okay, I'm taking my time and... Every day I'm opening up more, you know what I'm saying? But it's a process. It's not something like, bam, I'm just going to all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying, type of thing. You know, because every day we're working on it. Every day we're getting I mean, something. I'm just letting you know, I don't have any extra extra vows to be saying when it comes to standing up there with marriage. I mean, I got promises and stuff that I say I'll do, but as you see, you know, I'm Well, there's I do more stuff now. I'm going to... There's I don't have stuff. anything that's going to be more for you because I give you all of it because I'm very serious about my relationship now. Well, I'm marriage. serious right now too. But I'm not. I'm, kind I'm of, not. Just, I'm okay. not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that. You know, I just don't want you to be disappointed. But I don't know what more. I'm you not going of. to be. I'm not going to be disappointed. I feel like. I know that we're both like we haven't been married before, so I I understand that it's not like we're going to be experts. You know at it but we do I do have understanding about the things you're talking about 
you know, because at first with a prenup, at first I didn't even want, I was like, what? Now I understand the reason behind it, you know, and the value behind a prenup. You know, I, I now get it. You know, there's a lot of women who wouldn't, you know, but I do understand. And I feel like, you know, yes, I want to build a future with anyone. And, you know, um, we're building it right now, but I want to further build it. Uh, for me, in the plans, yes, marriage is in the plan for me. That is something. Yes, I would like the experience um, to be married. Um, and I'm just being... I'm just being honest about it. That dude's back and choking back there. Um, I'm just being honest about it. But with a wedding, I'm not just including myself. You know, I'm including him as well. Um, there's so many people who get married... Um, after being together three months or six months and they you know they're at the point where they think that they should get married and hurry up and run down the aisle I, I don't think that people should do that you know I think you know every day I, I come up with new things and um, think like man you know are people really doing these things you know or do you, do you really have girls having babies to, to get married is is this really the case you know um, I thought myself questioning stuff like um, there was on Facebook, there was a friend um, on Facebook um, <clears throat> as a guy and he married his best friend. Um, and, you know, surely people would say if you marry your best friend, you know, and he did, he married his brother's best friend. Surely you think that'll work out. Well, it's not really working out, <laughs> you know. Um, it, you know, doesn't really seem to be, you know. You look at pictures of people, it doesn't really seem to be going anywhere. So... I mean, yeah, you know, it's one of those things that, you know. I mean, if you guys are asking, did I seek advice from other people? I mean, we seek I mean, yeah, advice, did. yeah. But before I seek any advice from other people, I always make sure that I'm not talking behind her back. So I always make sure that she gets first dibs to fix it, to fix whatever problem that I'm having or whatever. Well, we, one, I'm now, one, if she decides not to, then I seek advice. Well, one thing is that we haven't argued a lot. You know, we've had less arguments. We don't argue as much as we used to. Yeah. You know, so it's not as bad it might be once. It may be once. It may be like maybe once a month. But, but it's not. But it's quickly diffused. You know what I'm saying? I know how to. I know how to remove myself and not get caught up in it. That's just a whole difference now. So, when are we getting married? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> maybe next year. Maybe the following year. But. One thing that I just thought was weird was that like for me it'll be for me it'll be more realistic when I when I see that money is actually compiled enough to do it. Then I'll actually will uh, Well, I want to go on vacation first. So okay, I, we can do I that. Wanna... We can do that first. But when I, but that's when that's when I will actually have it in my head when I when well, the money yeah, is compiled to, say, to do it. I mean I feel like, you know, I I feel like we we'd be newly going into it and you know, there's people who are going to say, like, you know, saying that, you know, you do it God's way and stuff. There are so many people who believe that. And, you know. Some people are trapped in their marriage. Like, there's guys that are, that are they feel like they can't leave. They, you know, because the woman is using Christianity on him so hard. But see, he hasn't did what he needed to do and read, and read the book to see that she doesn't even really believe in it. Because all he's got to do is read Ephesians. Once he reads Ephesians, brings it up. Just read that one book. Read Ephesians. Bring it to her attention what it says, how the man is supposed to be treated. If since she's such a Christian person and she uses it against you to control you so much. So once you bring that up to her, now you're going to see if she really does believe what she says she's following and what she's making you follow. Then you can go ahead and and realize that since she sees it and finds it okay to treat you a certain way, she finds it okay, the person she's supposed to love, supposed to care about, she finds it okay to treat you a certain way, that way, that's negative. You can treat her the same way because she finds it okay mm -hmm. to treat you that way. Yeah, I think, who knows? I mean, I didn't know that he, he thought that when we get it, the money saved up, then we do it. I, I don't know. One thing that one thing with people is that a lot of people, like I was saying, people say, oh, you just save 50 bucks and you go downtown. Well, it's not going to be like we want. Like, I never envisioned it like that. I always envisioned having family and friends. 
one thing that um, does sadden me, though, um, um, about the passing of my aunt is, uh, my aunt Mary is, you know, um, you know, I really wanted her to be alive to, to see it. And, um, so for me, it's, it's one of those things that I, her not being there is like one of those things and stuff. Um, and, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you have to like, for us, we have to take the time that we need to, to take and stuff to do what we have to do and stuff. So, um, I mean, it's, I mean, just seriously, like, you know, I mean, I have looked at venues and different stuff and, you know, that's why I wanted them to be like, you know, wheelchair accessible and stuff because I was thinking about my mind. That's what I was thinking about. Um, for real, you know, I'm sorry, but that's really what I was thinking about. And, but the thing is you can't, um, you can't just get married just because of stuff. You know, and this happened sudden, you know, my aunt's passing, nobody really knew. So it's one of those things that you you can't just do it because, you know, because of somebody's life or something. There's a lot of people who are doing it because of a family member and, you know, they're sick or something. There's, there's a lot of people who are doing it because of that. But, I mean, you know, you have to do it on your own time. And, you know, sometimes it's not going to be way, it's not going to be at most convenient time, you know. Um, but you can't do a marriage over, like, you, you know, like, unless you get alerted to somebody else. And, but, you know, it's really one of those things that you you have to do it when you both are ready and when it's, it, you both are going to be happy about it. You know, not really when, you know, it's about somebody else, you know, and that's why I would say for people who feel like they're forced to get married, you know, you should do it on your own time, you know, you should pay for your own wedding, don't, you know, don't have somebody holding something over your head, you know, and another thing is don't go and get a marriage loan, because that's the type of loan where they can repossess your stuff, they can actually do it for that, other stuff they can't, but a wedding loan, they can repossess your stuff, your car, a lot of stuff. And, you know, it's not very pretty. Uh, and I think that's how a lot of people get the money out of nowhere. Um, it's kind of unusual for people to get their parents to pay for it. Some people still do. Um, but neither of our parents are paying for anything. You know what I'm saying? We want to have control of our own wedding. That's something that we wanted to do is to save up the money to have control over our wedding and who comes and who does not um, and stuff, you know, that's really important. So, you know, who knows? I mean, sometime in the future we'll get married, maybe next year, you know. This year we have our minds on business and whole things up financially, so um, maybe next year we'll have it together or something, but... At this point, you know, we're just making it every day and trying to see what we can do, you know. So, um, I mean, I, I wish that we would have figured things out or got to it faster, you know, with certain things. But, you know, you, you, you never know, you know, with the timing of, you know, family members in their passing. You don't know, you know. So you just have to... I say do it what's best of your own time. Don't let anybody force you into something, any marriage you're not ready for. You know, um, if you're somebody's watching and you're you're um, you're engaged to somebody, take your time with your engagement. You know, we've been engaged for four or years, and and I would say take your time. Don't just run down the aisle like. And when I say run down the aisle, I mean, like, you get engaged and you feel like within the next three months you have to get married. Like, don't do that. Take your time. Get to know the person. Live with the person for a few years first before you do it, you know. Um, otherwise, you mean, one way or another, you're going to figure it out when you move in with the person. But isn't it better to kind of learn some things first, you know, beforehand? And then, you know, you find yourself in a bunch of bullshit. Because, you know, some people just want to copy other people and do what they do. And they, they really don't care, you know, and they just wait till they're married and they got kids and then there's a terrible ass situation and then, you know, there they are. And then they ask, you know, 
what could we do what what happened and and really it could have started by just making sure that you start off on the right foot by asking the right questions when you start dating and deciding where you both wanted to go yeah, you I'm, know I'm, and not I'm, letting the church bother you like or force you into something just because you're a christian and stuff you know hmm? what, what were you gonna say i was gonna say that you know i'm not the type of person to say some shit like you no know, now that we're married i'm gonna go ahead and tell you all the stuff i didn't like doing and I really didn't like this or anything. I'm not that type to, to, to say now that we're married, uh, I want to do this and I want to do that now. Or I didn't really like this about you or that about you. I'm not that type. That true. You should, if, if somebody says that, you just got married with distrust and you should probably end it because there's a lot of distrust probably there. Yeah. But when will we get married? We'll get married at some point. But when the money, when I see the when I see the money is saved up, then that's why I was always big on saving. You know, but when I see the money saved up and I see it that it's there, then I'll start making plans because the money's there. I don't have to worry about collecting it anymore. Well, so we'll see when it happens. I mean, and we'll, we'll tell people. It's not like we're gonna go and you know cloak and dagger and not tell people because I'm I'm big on telling people and wanting people in my family to be there and everything. You know, um, I am. You know, but we'll see what what happens. Yeah, just don't don't trip out about the prenup thing. I just want to make sure that I I I mean I love Michelle to the point where I don't want her to have any mess. You know, if she does decide, because I'm not the type to hold her prisoner, because I, I tried everything I could already. So I'm not the type to hold her prisoner anymore, saying oh there's more I can try because there's not. So you know when it, it you know, whenever if she has that shift for love for me, cool. If she has that shift of falling out for me, then the prenup is there so that you know she keeps what she came in a relationship with, she came in a marriage with, I keep I came in a marriage with. And as far as if we develop business, she doesn't have to worry about, you know, providing alimony or I don't have to worry about providing, you know, alimony and then worrying mm -hmm. about getting with another girl or getting with another man. You know, and using their alimony to benefit another relationship that you're not even with them in. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Some shit like that. So yeah, and one thing too, if you're you're trying to think about getting married, definitely have that talk about kids, because one of you may want kids and one of you may not. You know, or you may think you want kids. Go and like go be around kids first. Watch some people's kids. Watch some babies and see if you want to be around them. You know, keep them for a weekend or weeks on end. See if you really want the kids. Different ages because they have different scream levels at different ages. And different temper tantrum levels at different ages. Yeah, and hey, for a baby, I'll definitely tell you something. Um, what does it cost, like 250000 to have a kid? Yeah, you have to. It costs two hundred fifty thousand to raise a kid. It might have gone up since Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, it so. went up. It went up by twenty thousand since Donald Trump got elected. So, so it's like two hundred seventy. Yep. So you know, so I mean, and that's to raise a baby from zero to eighteen. And you, you know, these days you don't know if your kids gonna find no jobs. So it might be with you a lot longer than you think. So you know, it might be with you past twenty one because <laughs> you can't find no job. If you black. Well, <laughs> it can happen. Um, so, you know, definitely have that talk. Um, and also, you know, be, protect yourself do it with sex. Definitely protect yourself. Um, you know, make sure birth control is being used so there's no babies coming up out of nowhere. You know, if, you know, um, things with kids like a baby. If you want to know how much it costs for a baby, there's baby stores like Bye Bye Baby that you can go to, and go and have you know do a red uh, uh not red registry do a baby registry and see all the stuff that you have to buy for that kid. And there's stuff you're gonna have to keep buying like diapers and bottles and you know baby clothes because babies go through clothes and. You know the the baby bed and the ro the stroller and the the car seat and people have to get multiple car seats if there's mom and a dad and you know 
the, the food you have to buy and the pregnancy, that's what's going, that's where you get a guy is when a woman's pregnant because he's trying to keep up with, you know, a guy trying to keep up with the woman eating. A woman, can, if she's pregnant, can clean a fridge for real. So, you have to when I was pregnant. So, it, it can happen. So, you know, if you know that you're in a situation where you cannot afford a baby, don't have one. Don't do it. You cannot do the same thing that, you know, with a kid, you know, as you can when you're single. You can't. It's not, you know, I know you see all the stuff on social media, like, yeah, these girls say, like, oh, well, I, you know, I graduated from college and I had a baby when I was, a, you know, a teen and I graduated from college. It, it ain't like that. Just because, you know, if you end up do getting pregnant from, let's say, the pull-out method, don't have the baby. Yeah, just have an abortion. Because that just meant that that method of mm -hmm. birth control doesn't work for you. So you have to keep going through it until you find that method that works for you. Unfortunately, that's the only way you're going to fucking know if it works for you is if you end up mm -hmm. with a positive on your fucking pregnancy test. And I'm sorry, but that's the only way you're going to know. So And yeah, and yeah. one thing that... For women, you can always get the birth control implant. I mean, that's something you can get. Um, yeah, it does cost money, but if you, you know, you get cheap insurance, you should be able to get it, you know. Um, like Gateway, you should be able to get it or whatever um, and get that birth control. It lasts, um, I believe it's like four years at last and stuff like that, three to four years. And that's helpful because it keeps a woman from getting pregnant, you know. Um, and, you know, it's it's better in your relationship, you know, because if you have kids, you can't focus on each other, you know, because you're, you're worried about the kids. You're responsible as the kids. You know, it's not you and him. Like, you know, remember before, like, people like to reminisce about when they were together and they didn't have kids. And, but then they fast forward to that present time and they have kids. But then other people was debating whether or not, or wondering whether or not they should have kids. And then you convince them to have kids. And then they start asking you for help, but then you can't help them because you're focused on your own kids. And now they're all pissed off because you basically convinced them to, to have kids saying how good it was, but you didn't tell them the truth. Yeah, I and now mean, you got a bad relationship with them. Yeah, I mean, the, the best thing is, is that really consider if you want to have kids. You know, really consider because the kids are expensive. And, you know, the money you can spend on kids, you can be spent on doing some other stuff that you really want to do. Apparently, Michelle did some research and found out that you know, there's 300,000 babies born uh, every six Oh, yeah. Um, I found out that I was looking something up. Every 60 seconds, there are 300,000 babies that are born. Uh, 250 of those babies, 250,000 of those babies are born into poverty. And that's every 60 seconds, every minute. And that is, I was surprised that that many babies are born into poverty. You know, I was surprised. I was like, well, but then what about the, the other 50,000 are born to families where the families can support the kids? You know, but for 250,000 babies every minute to be born into poverty, you know, that's that, not... That's what, you know, that's what, you know, why how that happens. You know, that happens because, you know, the girls who are in poverty, they get incentives like taxes, money, and child support money you know, for having babies. So that's one way that they can try to get out of it. Or, you know, the you know, that's how they're born into poverty because the mom don't really have nothing. So she'll go and have a, a baby to use a to pressure a man into marrying her so that she can, you know, live off of that. You know, because she doesn't really know or they haven't been taught or, you know, or too too lazy to do anything, you know, to actually get out of that situation. You know, you got, they're born into poverty because of, you know, Facebook is a real big killer that's hurting everybody, where the word is basically hurting the children, because what women want to do is, she's having a paternity shoot, I have to get maternity. pregnant, a ma she's having a, a maternity shoot, so I have to get pregnant so that I can have a maternity shoot, well, if she's having a baby shower, I want to have a baby shower. You know, I want to have that baby shower experience, I want to have that maternity shoot experience. I want to have that marriage experience. So they have the babies to pressure the guy, you know, into getting married so they can have a marriage experience, which is why 
they don't, you know, have a kid. You know, which is why they don't really care about the children, and they're born into that poverty. Or they're trying to, you know, they got them, they got themselves a man who's six feet tall, light skin, got tattoos, and all the girls is after him. So they want to trap him, so that they can try to hold him, you know, hold hold him to themselves. But when you show that much of disrespect to a person that doesn't want kids, or if he's ever said that, he's going to leave you anyway. Yeah, you know, it's just just the way it's gonna happen. Yeah, but I know we've kind of we've kind of went a lot further than when we get out. Oh yeah, it's like two hours and thirty minutes, but but that's okay. I mean, the point is, is that we're real people and we're talking about real stuff that affects stuff, and you know, I think it's good that we we have learned about each other. There's a lot of people who don't even put the time into doing that, and they don't yeah. ask questions. Write that shit down. Wait. They don't do it. Uh, they're too lazy to do it, and they just go along with everything, and they, you know, some people just do it because, you know, it's what their family's going along with, and they, they feel comfortable with their family's doing, so they want to do the same thing, you know, and they, or they, everybody in their church is doing it, so they're going to do it, you know. Um, and they, they, they don't want to be independent and stand up and challenge that and do something different. Or you're sitting there believing what the news is telling you. You have to use your own eyes and see in the real world what's really going on. Yeah. Because shit was bad when I was eight, which is why I'm not having children. Because stuff is worse now that I'm older than when I was eight. So I got no business having a baby. Yeah. Or not having, me, helping to cre make one or create one. Yeah, that it makes since, but sometimes, you know, there's there could be the possibility of birth control failing, and you when that happens, you have to take, the, you know, you, you really have to sit down and think about what you have to do, and, you know, if you know you don't want to have a baby, you know, you know, I'd say as a couple, you guys need to decide together. It's, it's better if an abortion is done, because that way you guys can, you know, it's it's better, I would yeah, say. Because you know what doesn't work, and you'll know. Okay, this don't work. I need to try something else. You know, try a different method. And know. Well, yeah, because if work. you bring a kid into the world, I, every time I hear this with people where they have kids, it's like they'll say, "Oh, kids are expensive," and this and that other whatever and stuff, and they'll find it out. But then it's by then it's too late. You can't yeah. take the baby and back. Then, and then they go and they tell other people to convince other people to make the same mistake that they did, instead of telling them the truth about it so that they don't. You know, it's like they want to see other people miserable and in misery just like them, which I just don't understand that type of uh, that type of thinking. Yeah, but anyway, um, so thank you guys for watching this video. If you made it this far, you're a trooper. <laughs> yeah. To listen to everything we said, but yeah, we we bring real life stuff just like we do on our uh, YouTube channels and stuff like that. We Go to through um, Butterfly Spirit three on four. He's in want your hero. I'm tired, so, <laughs> work, so you know. Yeah. But yeah, when we get married, it's anybody's guess. But we will let people know who were invited. You know, yeah. for them to come and stuff like that. When the money is saved up and there's a date months out, we'll let you know. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. See you. Bye.